Greenland, 1963. For the past four years, isolated from the rest of the world in a frozen, desolate landscape, scientists and researchers have been working diligently day and night in freezing sub-zero temperatures. Drilling deep into the Arctic ice cap, they extract numerous core samples to study in hopes of better understanding climate change and global warming. They work from Camp Century, a nuclear-powered Arctic research center constructed by the United States in 1959. To the outside world, Camp Century and its research programs are monuments to 20th century scientific achievement and progress. But in actuality, the camp is nothing more than an elaborate cover story for a top secret US military initiative to build a network of mobile nuclear missile launch sites under the Greenland ice sheet. This is the story of Project Iceborne. Beginning in 1947, the geopolitical and military tensions between the capitalist United States and communist Soviet Union, known as the Cold War, had been escalating steadily. The United States, which had been the world's first nuclear armed superpower, had recently lost this advantage when the Soviet Union detonated this, their first nuclear weapon, on August 29th, 1949, beginning an atomic arms race between the US and USSR. Both nations subsequently began testing and stockpiling massive amounts of nuclear weapons in anticipation of a coming war with each other. Though, as you can see, the geographic distance between the two powers meant that the only feasible way to deliver these new weapons to their respective targets would be to use vulnerable long-range nuclear-armed strategic bombers like the B-52 Stratofortress. However, this would all change in 1957 when the Soviet Union successfully launched their new R-7 missile, the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile, or ICBM. This meant that they now had the capacity to quickly strike targets within the continental United States using missiles armed with nuclear warheads. In response, the United States would soon develop its own ICBM, the SM-65 Atlas, in 1959, which only further exacerbated the nuclear standoff. Both sides would now strive to gain any strategic advantage they could in this new ICBM era, which led the US to begin developing a new top-secret covert mobile missile program codenamed Project Iceworm. Having the ability to launch first and quickly destroy the enemy's capacity to launch a counter-strike would now be of the highest priority for both powers to achieve. In the event of a war occurring, the shortest and therefore fastest possible route for an American or Soviet launched ICBM to take was to go directly across the North Pole. This meant that Greenland's close proximity to the pole made it the ideal geographic location for a possible US Arctic missile complex. In order to keep construction of this potential new Arctic missile complex secret from the Soviets, a detailed cover story was soon devised. The cover involved the creation of a nuclear-powered Arctic research facility that, to the public, would be used for the purposes of carrying out ice core research and also for the testing of new Arctic construction methods. The research station was to be constructed in the vast, isolated Arctic wilderness, about 100 miles from the edge of the Greenland ice shelf. And the resulting remoteness of this location would then lead to the site being designated as Camp Sentry. Construction of Camp Sentry began in June 1959 and was to be carried out by the US Army Corps of Engineers under the leadership of Colonel John Kirkering and Captain Thomas Evans. Setting up the camp would be an arduous and painstaking endeavor for all involved. The first phase of construction saw the digging of these 12 meter deep snow trenches using Swiss made plows. Once the trenches were dug, they were then covered over in sections by an arch metal roof, which in turn would then be buried by leftover snow, fully concealing it. Inside these new tunnels, prefabricated buildings that had been shipped to the site inside crates were then assembled by the army engineers. 26 of these new subterranean tunnels and prefabs were eventually built and then linked together by a larger central trench running the entire length of the complex. The PM2, a portable nuclear reactor to power the facility, was the final and most delicate piece of equipment to be installed at the camp. Building the facility took over six months and was a massive feat of engineering and ingenuity. The resulting camp could now house up to 200 soldiers and researchers at a time and contained a chapel, cafeteria, hospital, machine shop, dormitories, comm center, recreation center, and even a barber shop. Once the camp was completed, 
the real scientific research that was part of the facility's cover did actually begin to take place, with much valuable historical climate data being gained from it. Though already extremely impressive, Camp Sentry would soon pale in comparison to the much larger complex that the military planned to expand it into. The full-sized missile complex would be spread across over 160,000 square kilometers, would house over 11,000 soldiers, and would see the deployment of over 600 Iceman nuclear ICBMs to Greenland. However, none of this would come to fruition, as just over two years into Camp Sentry's research mission, it was determined that the Greenland ice shelf was far too unstable to support the deployment of hundreds of ICBMs. This was due to faster than anticipated glacial movements, which resulted in Camp Sentry's tunnels deforming, warping and bulging, eventually leading to complete collapse. As a result, the military's interest in continuing to explore the feasibility of an Arctic missile complex began to wane considerably. Furthermore, the US Navy also argued that their new nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines, armed with nuclear-tipped Polaris ICBMs, could better fulfill the role of a nuclear deterrent in a similar but much more practical fashion. Even so, scientific research involving Arctic ice cores would continue at the site for some time afterwards, but use of the camp became less and less frequent until in 1967, when the military finally decided to abandon the site altogether, unceremoniously ending Project Iceworm. After Camp Sentry's decommission, around 42,000 tonnes of physical material was left behind, along with 200,000 litres of diesel fuel, toxic coolants and human waste. Worst of all, a reported 800,000 litres of radioactive waste from the portable nuclear reactor was also left behind, buried under the ice. The US military had hoped that continuous snowfall in the region would eventually permanently cover the site and keep the secret of the camp's real purpose buried and entombed forever and Project Iceworm did remain a closely guarded US secret up until 1997, when the Danish Institute of International Affairs finally exposed Camp Sentry's true military nature and origins to the world. The site is now seen as a potential major environmental threat, as global warming has resulted in much of the snow that the camp was buried under melting away faster than expected. It is now estimated that by 2090, the site will be completely uncovered, and if the radioactive waste from the camp mixes with meltwater and travels to the coast, an enormous environmental catastrophe could occur. As such, the site has now been labelled as a multinational and multi-generational problem, but hopefully it is one problem that we can quickly solve. Thanks for watching.